Good morning boys and girls and welcome to National International Storytelling Week. This week in Key Stage 1 and in EYFS we are reading Dr. Zeus's The Lorax. It's one of my favourite stories. I hope you enjoy. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing except old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the crickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows, the old once lost still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the once lost. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurker, on top of his store. He lurks in his lurker called under the roof, where he makes his own clothes, out of mid muff moon, and on a special dank midnight in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks, and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you will, to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets you down a tin pail, and you have to toss in fifteen pence and a nail. And the shovel of the great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snow, his secret strange hole in his wolf below's drawer. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secret I tell you are for your ears alone. Slop, down slop the whisper from my phone to your ear, and the old ones there whispered, not very clear. Since they have to come down through the sniggling holes, and sounds as if he had smellyish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got gifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swoomy swans rang out in space one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees and the truffle trees the bright coloured truffles and the truffle trees mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle of fruits. From the rippleous pond came a comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees. Those trees, those trapella trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their crops was much softer than silk, and they had a sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leap of joy in my heart. I knew just what i do. I unloaded my heart.
In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a true filler tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill, and with great speedy speed, I took the soft stuff and knit the meat. The instant I finished, I heard a gazoom. I looked. I saw something popped up the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish, oldish, and brownish, and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lord, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongue. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's the thing you're made out of, my truffle or tuft? Look, 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 lords, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful, the thing is a sneeze. A sneeze that finds something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There's no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. Ha ha ha! You poor stupid guy! You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick poll, I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Onslet family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weehawken, shrub right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory built, the whole Wansley family was working for tilt. We were all made with meat, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of the truffle tree. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now, chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker which whacked or four chafula trees at one smacker. We were making knees four times as fast as before. And that Lorix, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown babaloot, who played in the shade in their babaloot suit and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, that's not enough truffula fruit to go around. And my poor babaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can let them stay. They have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the wrestler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of companies 
in Tamis and you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, the bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I shipped them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he ripped. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snuggled and he sniffed. One slur, he cried with a coupleless prod. One slur, you're making the smuggler smoke. My poor swammy swans, why they can't sing a note? No one can sing who has smuggled it throat. And so said the Larex, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here. So I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hope you know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up all around here. What's more, snapped the lorix. His danger was up. Let me say a few words about glup to glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without a stop. Making glup to glup. Also, sclop to sclop. And what do you do with this leftover go? I'll show you, you dirty old once man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hum. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gum. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad 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 well i have my rights sir and i'm telling you i intend to go on doing just what i do and for your information you lorax i'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering turning more trifula trees into needs which everyone 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 needs and at that very moment we heard a loud whack from outside in the field came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree then we heard the tree fall the very last truffle tree of them all there. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smothered stars. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax, Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad record glance, as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hasted himself and took leave of this place, though a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that Lorex left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, 
unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I sit here and worried and worried away. Though the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the once learned, now that you're here, the word of the Lorex seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the wantler. He lets something fall. It's the Trophilus seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the Trophilus seeds. And Trophilus seeds are what everyone needs. Plant a new Trophila, treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorex and all his friends may come back. And that's the end of our story.